Good afternoon. I'm happy to say I'm almost caught up on reading the one year, the Bible in one year. I'm going to do yesterday's day now and then today's day after, if that makes sense. I'm now going to read for day 11, which was yesterday, but we're on the 12th of January. So today is the 12th of January 2021. I'm reading the Bible in one year. Day 11 is going to cover Genesis 20 to 21, Psalm 11, that means chapter 20 and chapter 21, Psalm 11 and Matthew the Gospel 5 verses 38 to 48. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reading from Genesis 20, Abraham at Gerar. Abraham left there for the region of the Negev and settled between Kadesh and Shur. While staying in Gerar, Abraham said of his wife Sarah, She is my sister. And Abimelech, the king of Gerar, had Sarah brought to him. But God visited Abimelech in a dream one night. You are to die, he told him, because of the woman you have taken, for she is a married woman. Abimelech, however, had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, would you kill someone even if he is upright? Did he not tell me himself, she is my sister? And she herself said, he is my brother. I did this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Yes, I know, God replied in the dream, that you did this with a clear conscience. conscience. And I myself prevented you from sinning against me. That was why I did not let you touch her. Now send the man's wife back, for he is a prophet and can intercede on your behalf for your life. But understand that if you do not send her back, this means death for you and all yours. Early next morning, Abimelech summoned his full court and told them the whole story, at which the people were very much afraid. Then summoning Abraham, Abimelech said to him, What have you done to us? What wrong have I done you for you to bring such guilt on me and on my kingdom? You had no right to treat me like this. Abimelech then said to Abraham, What possessed you to do such a thing? Because Abraham replied, I thought there would be no fear of God here, and that I should be killed for the sake of my wife. Anyway, she really is my sister my father's daughter, though not my mother's, besides being my wife. So when God made me wander far from my father's home, I said to her, There is an act of love you can do me. Everywhere we go, say of me that I am your brother. Abimelech took sheep, cattle, men and women, slaves, and presented them to Abraham and gave him back his wife Sarah. And Abimelech said, Look, my land is open to you. Settle wherever you please. 
to Sarah, he said, look, I am giving your brother a thousand pieces of silver. This will allay suspicions about you as far as all the people round you are concerned. You have been completely vindicated. Abraham then interceded with God and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his slave girls so that they could have children. For Yahweh had made all the women of Abimelech's household barren on account of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Genesis chapter 21 The birth of Isaac Yahweh treated Sarah as he had said and did what he had promised her. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age. At the time God had promised, Abraham named the son born to him Isaac, the son to whom Sarah had given birth. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has given me cause to laugh. All who hear about this will laugh with me. She added, whoever would have told Abraham that Sarah would nurse children. Yet, yet I have born a son in his old age. The dismissal of Hagar and Ishmael. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham gave a great banquet on the day Isaac was weaned. Now Sarah watched the son that Hagar, the Egyptian, had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. Drive away that slave girl and her son. She said to Abraham, This slave girl's son is not to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. This greatly distressed Abraham, because the slave girl's child too was his son. But God said to him, Do not distress yourself on account of the boy and your slave girl. Do whatever Sarah says, for Isaac is the one through whom your name will be carried on. But the slave girl's son and I all shall also make into a great nation, for he too is your child. Early next morning, Abraham took some bread and a skin of water, and giving them to Hagar, put the child on her shoulder and sent her away. She wandered off into the desert of Beersheba. When the skin of water was finished, she abandoned the child under a bush. Then she went and sat down at a distance, about a bow shot away, thinking, I cannot bear to see the child die. Sitting at a distance, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven. What is wrong, Hagar? he asked. Do not be afraid, for God has heard the boy's cry in his plight. Go and pick the boy up and hold him safe, for I shall make him into a great nation. Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. So God was with the boy, grew up and made his home in the desert and became an archer. He made his home in the desert of Paran and his mother got him a wife from Egypt. Abraham and Abimelech at Beersheba. About then, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, Since God is with you,
in everything you do, swear to me by God here and now that you will not act treacherously towards me or my kith and kin, but behave with the same faithful love to me and the land of which you are a guest, as I have behaved to you. Yes, Abraham replied, I swear it. Abraham then reproached Abimelech about a well that Abimelech's servants had seized. I do not know who has done this, Abimelech said. You yourself have never mentioned it to me, and for myself I heard nothing of it till today. Abraham then took his sheep and cattle and presented them to Abimelech and the two of them made a covenant. Abraham put seven lambs of the flock on one side. Why have you put these seven lambs on one side? Abimelech asked Abraham. He replied, You must accept these seven lambs from me as evidence that I have dug this well. This was why the place was called Beersheba because there the two of them swore an oath. After they had made a covenant at Beersheba, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, left and went back to Philistine territory. The word of the Lord. I must just have a sip of drink before I continue with Psalm 11. Thank you, excuse me, but my throat was getting a little dry. I'm near the radiator. A reading from Psalm 11. The confidence of the upright. In Yahweh I have found refuge. How can you say to me, Bird flee to your mountain? For look, the wicked are drawing their bows fitting their arrows to the string to shoot honest men from the shadows. If the foundations fall to ruin, what can the upright do? Yahweh in his holy temple, Yahweh his throne in heaven, his eyes watch over the world, his gaze scrutinizes the children of Adam. Yahweh examines the upright and the wicked. The lover of violence he detests. He will rain down red-hot coals, fire and sulphur on the wicked. A scorching wind will be their lot. For Yahweh is upright and loves uprightness. The honest will ever see his face. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 verses 38 to 48. Glory to you, O Lord. You have heard how it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I say this to you, Offer no resistance to the wicked. On the contrary, if anyone hits you on the right cheek, offer him the other as well. If someone wishes to go to law with you to get your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone requires you to go one mile, go two miles with him. Give to anyone who asks you. And if anyone wants to borrow, do not turn away. You have heard how it was said, you will love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say this to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven for he causes the sun to rise on the bad as well as the good. 
and sends down the rain to fall on the upright and the wicked alike. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Do not even the tax collectors do as much? And if you save your greetings for your brothers, are you doing anything exceptional? Do not even the Gentiles do as much? You, therefore, be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for listening. That's about 15 minutes in length. It was quite long. God bless you. I'm sending you the peace of Christ and we'll be up to date with the next reading. So be joyful and happy.